Hoffman. We're doing all the things from all the places. Welcome to the Rudy Cafe. This is our weekly call called The Portion. Uh, normally, Brenda and myself are your co-hosts. Everyone, we're going to send a quick prayer. Father, we thank you that we know you're surrounding Brenda and her family today as they are helping to usher their mother into your presence. Father, I thank you for the joy. I thank you for the comfort, the wisdom. I thank you for the refreshing strength that you're just pouring into that family. Thank you for all the provision that you've made for giftings of food and all the things for them right now and, and wisdom. So we just thank you for that and bring us, bring her to us next week. Um, if you, this is, uh, if, you, if you're new, just so that you know, this is our weekly portion call. This is when we're going through each portion in the Torah portion, which is just a section out of the portion that everyone's following along in the same thing. If you need a copy of that to know where we are, you can look under files or downloads. It's up in there or let us know and we can help get that to you. Um, super practical application, 0% religion, 100% relationship. Please double check every single thing we say, because Lord knows what could come out of our mouths. Um, we, we have so many diverse doctrines here, so many diverse in beliefs, but together we all point to Messiah. And that's what our goal is here is just to all point to Messiah. So um, this call is part again, part of one of our is our free membership. Um, and you can access uh, replays to this as well in, the, in your library. And if you don't know how to do that, please um, email us at info at the rooted cafe with a K and we'll help you do that. Um, Doo -doo -doo -doo, I think that's it. Okay, that's all I'm going to go for there. This is getting excited. We are in Leviticus 16. So open up your word. I use the tree of life version. Let's see if you can see. The reason I like it is because you can't see. I like that it has um, the portions. It actually says the portions above so I can find it. I actually like this version for that reason, but that's the one I use. I also have the scriptures. I also use the blue letter Bible. So I look up all the other versions because I like to see because it's, you know, Hebrew is a verb driven language. It's a huge hieroglyphic giant mural picture. It would take truckloads and train loads of documents to truly get every little letter word conjugated and interpreted perfectly. It would take every all the things. It would take so much to actually actually see it. Also, if you can get a little bit from every version, you kind of get uh, a better understanding, I think. So if this is your first time and you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you're live with us, we have the comments going over here in Zoom. All the girls, all the ladies, here's where the cool kids are hanging out. So get in there, answer each other and chat about myself today. So I might, I might be looking like this, trying to see all the things. If you're watching live on Facebook, we love you. Welcome, welcome. The replay, all the same. Love's going out to you guys. This week, we're in Leviticus 16.1. We're going to go through 18.30, okay? And uh, here we go, me trying to say this word. If someone could unmute, if they know how to say it better, please do. Um, Arkare Mot. Is that right? Arkari. A-R-C-H-A-R-E-I is the name. This is when we all say, wish Brenda was here. So that Ahari. is, what is it? Say it. Arkari Mot. Aharai. Yeah, I was, I did the Aharai. I did it right before we started. And then, yeah. And then my brain took over. Okay. Aharai. Aharai. Remember the do that part. So it's interesting that this word that I had written in my notes from before, the word uh, Aharai is actually means a loose translation would be the word after. And then immediately we start, go right into, it says after, then Adonai spoke to Moses after Arharai, the death of the two sons Aaron, of Aaron, when they approached the presence of Adonai and died. So the father approaches and said, after they came to him with, remember, strange fire. And I'm really bummed that we didn't get to be with each other last week because there are so many cool things about Tazria, about all the things about uh, having leprosy, what that could really mean. So tune in next year when we go back there. But after this is all happening, he comes back and says, now, after this all happened with Aaron, and his sons, but, but it's interesting that he's saying now that we've seen how, this is what my interpretation is. Now that you've seen how not to do it after you've seen it done wrong, then I want to show you how to do it right. Right. So he's saying after this happened, when Aaron's sons did it the wrong way, then he, he appears to Moses and says, let me just show you how it's supposed to be done. The other thing that I have seen, I've seen and read is the word also is 
is giving us a picture saying in the ultimate after in the ultimate after in the in the messianic age in the ultimate after when yeshua is our high priest in the ultimate after this is when this what it's going to look like and this is how things are going to be happening so that's where we're going the ultimate um this is also telling us not just how to escape it you're seeing we're not just saying how do we escape sin how do we uh how do we keep from doing it this is actually a whole portion on how to be redeemed from it how we're going to be redeemed how you can be redeemed and we jump right into yom kippur this in the service of what happens in the service of yom kippur and i would love in notes you guys tell me some stories and we can talk i can i'll jump back over here in a minute and see some stories about some of the traditions maybe that you've brought into your home as far as yom kippur i'd love to hear some of those because this is a time when a lot of people how many of you guys uh, what hand say yes that's me how many of you take the day off how many of you know that you this is a high holy day it is a shabbat it is a high holy shabbat it is a day there's no eating it's a fasting day it's mandatory a lot of times we're like well what days do i fast this is one of them it's it's a fasting day it's a day of atonement it's a day when we're seeking the father it's a day when we're seeking to be cleansed it's a day that um some in some congregations they they are wearing white i see debbie saying uh, we fast anyone else uh erica you're in here what do you do uh erica ours has a small prayers in the book like the small sitter it's a tree of life family bible oh i love that someone came hey, unmuted tell me what you, what you do last year um our assembly we had a whole prayer usually it's kind of like on our own and then we would get together right for a service right before the um to break it right but last year um everything was different and heightened last year you know because of everything going on so uh we did um a full day of prayer so the men started early in the morning and then um and then we read through um is it jonah that we read i think it's jonah that mm -hmm. is traditionally read and then there were right. some other scriptures that um throughout the day we read and prayed and read and prayed um for it so not everybody was there all together but whenever when people but there was someone praying all throughout the day oh i love that speaking of prayer would you open us in prayer erica do you mind no no problem Oh, Father Yahweh, we just give you thanks and praise for this day you've given us. We just thank you that you're bringing us and ushering us into your special time, your holy Shabbat. And I just ask that um, as we learn and speak and um, grow in your word, um, that you would teach us, teach us about your holiness, teach us about the way that you desire for us to live um, so that we can grow close to you because we know that everything um, flows back to that father growing close to you and loving one another um we just thank you and praise you and we just ask uh healing over those who need healing yes we are praying for those who need strength right now father for brenda and her family for those who are dealing with um sicknesses or death in the family um or just emotional upheaval father all those things father we pray that you're just covering them right now we love you and praise you hallelujah and amen amen you know, we talk a lot on here about how we are, we want to be very, very, very beginner friendly. But I feel like I have quite a few of you who are, have been doing this for 15, 20 years, it's been a long time. And what you're enjoying is you love that we're talking about practical applications. We're pra talking about how do we practically walk this out? And I want to encourage you, if you're a beginner and you're just starting, and this is like maybe the first time you've ever read this because you've avoided Leviticus at all costs. You like went running when you saw Leviticus. You didn't even show up to service that day because you're like, oh, they're preaching on Leviticus. I'm out. I hate that book. It's scary. And I don't want to be told not what to do, but also I don't understand it. You are in good company because there's a lot of us have felt that way. And I want you to know you're okay and you're in the right place. But what I also want to encourage you is that I want to encourage you that any downloads that you get i want you to share them with us and not think oh well they, everyone probably already knows this because i have something today i want to share about that and i the first thought i had was gosh everybody probably already knows this and i'm just now getting it i just want to encourage all of you i don't care how little silly it is you think would you share it with us because together or it could be this major aha thing or you read a study would you share in here what is every week i'd love us to be a, not just a community where we're supporting each other and we're giving great bread recipes but i also want to be a community where we're saying hey i was reading this what do you guys think this was amazing i heard this heard this like oh yeah i was reading about yom kippur and this is what we do in our family do you guys have suggestions 
but also about what your revelations are, because I truly believe that we together make the body. And as we're doing this as a body, um, I'm going to get a little piece from you and a little piece from you and a little piece from you and a little piece from you. And each year I'm just building more and more knowledge. Wouldn't it be great inside of our little, you know, tour journals, if you don't have one, like keep a notebook that you get to write little lines in there of new little things, not only that have you've received as a download, but you know, gosh, things you've received from each other. What have you learned from each other and, and those downloads? So it's a day to fast. And it's all, it's a day to repent. This is the day when you, as you're reading through here, you see that the Holy one is telling Aaron, this is how, well, he's telling Moses and Aaron, this is what I want you to do. And this is how I want you to walk things out. And this is how I want you to, for the, you're the redemption of the sin of, of the people of yourselves as the, as the priest. And this is the process that I want you to go through. And this is going to happen one day a year. It's going to be a day that is going to last for eternity. I want you to be doing this. This might be your first year. If you're not, if you haven't done any of the festivals yet, can I encourage you to choose this one? Can I encourage you to choose this? Someone look up the date. I think it's in September. I think it's like some, I don't know. It's in September, like the 12th or 11th or something. Look up, the, know the date, get the day off because it's a, it's a Shabbat. You're not to work. You're not, this is actually a fasting day as well. Like we said that you have a plan for it. Cause I feel like what has happened to me most of my walk is that I'm so busy and all these things. Then it's like, oh, oh, it's now what do I do? It's it's Yom Kippur. Oh, now what do I do? It's this. And I would love this not to take you by surprise this year because I would like you to get something extra special this year from this time. Did someone, if someone posted, I'll just keep looking. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling for my mouse and I'm on a laptop. Um, Perfect. Just keep someone finds the date, pop it in there, pop it on Facebook. Let us know when the date is this year. So all those who need to take the day off work, if you need to, for me, I need to clear my calendar because I'll have appointments set and I won't know because I have a virtual calendar people make appointments on. So I have to make sure that I make myself not available that day. So I don't have to reschedule everything. Let's prepare for the process. Let's prepare for the blessing. It's a date we have with our father. And he's saying, I want a special, we know we're redeemed. We know at any moment we can go boldly to the throne and say, father, forgive me, father, whatever's happening. I mean, that was happening all through the, through the week, right? There was all these approaches that were happening. People were coming in, bringing sin and guilt and shame offerings. And they were bringing fellowship things, anything that was keeping them from his presence, they were coming in and doing. But what he's saying is I want there to be one day where we really just let's clean house and literally let's clean house. Guess what happened on this day? You'll read here. He's telling you, I want you to clean everything because can you imagine what's happening? Things are coming and going in and out of the, in and out of the inner courts, especially bringing in all the bloody animals. Everything's being processed, not just the physical filth of it all, but can you imagine the, um, it, the spiritual dirtiness of it all people bringing in all of their stuff and just bringing it all in and so it was a time when the priests were supposed to basically spring clean spring clean in the fall lisa you have your hand up unmute go ahead and unmute and and go sister you have something to say i was just gonna say um i think some women put it in the chat too but um and i'm probably not saying this right guys but i think it's something around like the halal calendar but on that calendar um it starts on sunset at Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. The date yes. you're asking for. Just so well, one more time. What was the date? September what? Um, so sunset at September 15th. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought nightfall, oh. September 16th. Yeah. Perfect. We you'll hear us talking. So I apologize for those that if it brings confusion, we we follow up the halal calendar. Only because for us, we choose to do that because we are in alignment with whatever's the majority of tapping in, in Israel. It happens to align with what we've known and what we have walked in. There are several of you who walk in a different calendar. Can I just say, yay, just follow it. Like we're all called to, we're called to line up with these. And, and if you look, it tells us on, it tells you even, it says this one actually has the date. So you can do the work on the date, whatever there's been changes in date. There's reasons people follow other calendars. We're not going to be talking about that here today, but the one that we're going to practice that we'll tell you about is the Halal calendar. And you'll find that probably the majority of us do. Sombra, I'm going to read what you said. She said, this Torah teaches us to love, but we see the word sin and think, ah, condemnation. It's awful. Reject, reject. But we can change our vision and see sin, not as something to hate, 
something to reject, especially when we see it in others, but rather sin as aiming, but missing and trying, but not perfect yet. Let's not treat sin as if it's something to blame. Rather, let's see it as something to encourage, to keep trying, to keep refocusing. Um, let's see if I can see, because I've got more here. To keep refocusing, th to aim so that we do get it perfect in time. Yes, the, th the whole purpose of sin, the word sin is just missing the mark. It's an archery term, missing the mark. It's not you're burning in hell because you did this. This is, you've missed the mark. So this is a time when we, when we have the, a high priest, which we know Yeshua is our high priest. So if we just keep, every time we talk about everything that Aaron is supposed to be doing, I want you to think about what Yeshua is doing for us is that we have this, we are, this is a time when, when the two goats would be brought to the altar. And then, then there would be a bull would be for the Kohanim. They would, they would, they would actually have to do a bull, right? We have the two goats. One would be chosen. The hand, the, the high priest, the priest with them would lay hands. Aaron is saying that he says, I want you to lay your hands on the goat that was chosen. And then you're going to put the, you're going to then put the sins. You're going to confess the sins of, of the congregation of all the people onto this goat. And then if I'm not correct, I read through and I, I read it through about three times and this is one of the things I've never paid attention to, but can someone, someone who maybe this is like, yes, I already know this. Let me tell you, silly goose. What, from what I see, see here is that that goat, we call it the scapegoat, that goat, uh, the word is actually the, I have it written in Hebrew is the Az Azazel, Azazel. And it's actually sent to Azazel, which is like the wilderness. So it's Azazel is the scapegoat. Can someone show me? It seems to me that, that that goat is present through all the stuff that's happening and at the very end, and they finally take it out. And they can someone say, Yes, that's what happens? Um, because I that was one of the things I wrote down because I'm like, I want to know this because I feel like there's something to this as well is that that goat stayed until the end and then it was sent out. So that was one of the things that kind of I had a question mark, and that's how I study. So that's kind of what I wanted to do today is walk you through my study this week on this. Is I write questions like, Hmm. Yeah, so that's said a couple of times. I wonder if there's something to that. And then I'll go back in or, hmm, I don't understand that. So I'm going to dig a little deeper or, hmm, that hurts my head. Maybe next year. I mean, let's be honest, some days, some years, but sometimes there's that thing that hits you in your heart and you're like, I think he's trying to tell me something here. And that was one of the ones I just put a question mark. So um, what's happening in the deep cleaning? It's there. He, the people are cleaning their homes. The people are cleaning, cleaning the temples. Wouldn't it be cool if that was a tradition we added? We do spring cleaning at Passover, sort of like cleaning the, the, the yeast. But what if we have like the fall cleaning? We have a couple times a year. And as we're doing that, the whole purpose is that we're talking about cleaning out ourselves. And as we're doing it, I don't know about, does anybody else like when they're, they do a lot of praying when they're cleaning? Does anyone else do that? Because I do that. I do, I'll pray as I'm cleaning. I think what a really great thing is that this is a time when as we're cleaning out our homes, but more importantly, sitting, spending that day cleaning before that, and then the day of Yom Kippur, that you're just cleaning out your heart. You're saying, Father, search my heart. Be like David, like whatever in here is not pure. We talk day to day. Maybe we, you're a texter, like you're texting God quick little messages, but this is a day where you're sitting with him all day. You're fasting. You're saying, reveal, some, reveal to me this year, what is it that I need to work on? Reveal to me what is keeping me from your presence in the fullness that I need to be in your presence. Father, what's hindering me from walking straight into the throne, whether it's because I feel hindered, like we talked about the approaches and I need help. You never leave me or forsake me, but what's hindering me from feeling bold that I could just come right in? Is there something that I'm doing that you need to let me know that I don't even, I'm not even aware of because we have things I'm doing that I'm missing the mark. I don't even see it. Or is there some blatant things, Father, that I, I just am, gosh, I'm rebellious on some things and I just haven't given them up. And this is the day we get to do that. I know in some congregations, um, they, everyone dresses in white. It's, uh, they all dress in white as a uh, symbolism. Uh, one of uh, my daughter's sister-in-law, they, they have stations that, that they kind of like Erica was saying, people came in. Well, they had it, the church, their fellowship hall, I think is opened all day. And so they go like station to station to station. And each one, they actually can kind of just talk about things. Well, just it were little prompts, kind of like little prompts. You could sit and journal, you could sit and pray. 
but it's just little prompts to have you thinking. And I'm going to try to get a copy of that. So y'all can maybe it'd be something kind of fun to do, even if you did it around your house, right? Did it around your yard where you had a, uh, had that. Um, fasting, cleaning. Um, the big thing is, gosh, we're getting ready to meet our maker. We're, we're getting ready to be the bride without spot or wrinkle because we don't know the time we don't know the day or the hour that he's returning but what we do know is the season he says we'll know the season and most of us know it's going to be sometime it says the trumpets will blast so it's got to be around the feast of trumpets right it's got to be around sometime in the fall he came to us the first time during sukkot maybe he comes during this it's going to be a season we kind of know the seasons and this is a time when he's wanting us to get he gives you the opportunity to get prepared let's get the white clothes on let's rinse out the spots and wrinkles Let's do some cleaning to get things all ready so that we're ready to prepare ourselves to walk in. And then we're reminded, Hebrews 10, 3 tells us that we're reminded of our sin every year. Every year, he tells us we're reminded in our sin. It's a time for us to humble our souls. Um, I've kind of trivialized, trivialized being able to just walk into his presence. I felt like that today, this morning, we got up, we got early, we're actually headed to Oklahoma. So all my girls out there in Oklahoma I'll be at um, a fellow, Miriam, the Stalworth congregation in Oklahoma City tomorrow for, for fellowship for Shabbat. So we are traveling, like trying to get there. We're going to get there before sundown and like shut down. We're ready to go. But what I have found this morning, we had an issue and we had some issue with a tire pressure and my husband had to, to air the tire up. So I got out and I took a quick little walk with a dog. And it was just, the sun was just coming up and I walked out on the peninsula. There's a lake everywhere where we were. And I just started talking to him and I was like, father, I'm so sorry that I, I feel like I just trivialized just coming into your presence. I take it for granted that you're omnipresent and I just say your name and you're there and you, and I don't have to wait in line or make an appointment. I mean, how many of you I've said, Hey, my calendar's open. Here's my appointment times. I mean, I think I'm so cool. And here's the creator of the universe doesn't even have a calendar link for us to like schedule, a, schedule a call with him. He's just there. He's on direct speed dial and he's got, you know, millions of other people who want to talk to him and, and he's there for us. He's there for just me. And that's where I was this morning. I said, I really, I trivialize the fact that I can just run into his presence. So what a great day to just have an all day appointment with him and take it really serious and not. I mean, and I mean, waited, you know, understand the glory of that. Understand that he's saying, I'm going to make an appointment with you where you could just be in my, and I'm going to wipe the slate clean for you. I want to be in your presence. And I want to be able to show you how I've already wiped the slate clean. I want to be in, in your presence and show you how to get, how to come to me boldly. Sarita, you have your hand up. You want to unmute? Yeah, I just wanted to answer your question about um, the scapegoat. Yeah, the scapegoat's the last thing to go after the bull is sacrificed and then the land or the goat for the sin offering for mm -hmm. the people. And mm -hmm. then the priest lays his hands on the scapegoat and confesses all the iniquity of the congregation over it. And then it's sent out into the wilderness. So yeah, you're right about that. So it's like the last part of that. Yeah, like, do you guys, does anyone have, please unmute yourself or, or if you're watching this on the replay, if you have some insight on that, or you have a revelation or you've been taught something on that, I'd love to hear about that because I don't, I don't think that this is a mistake. Does anyone else think like, hmm, I don't think it's, I think it's interesting that he's, he's the scapegoat is till the very end. And then he's sent out and then someone is sent to go, let him go. And he's sent out. And there's, I started doing this, um, word study on the word for uh, the scapegoat it's a z a z e l and that's uh obviously that's not the hebrew um but that was what it was and that i, I apologize it did not write the uh, strongest concordance but if you go into the blue letter bible look up this scripture verse and look where it's talking about the two goats and that gives you the scapegoat it will give you the name and you can start doing i think there's something that, that, that there's a secret thing in there if you want to look up look up scapegoat look up the word Azazel, look it up, get in there. Uh, Sarita, you have your hand up again? Just unmute, girl. It's, it's interruption yeah, day, just come in. As, I'm, as I like just read through it, it's interesting because Messiah is, he's uh, he is our, the, the sacrificial goat in a sense, but he is also the scapegoat. 
because he takes, he purifies the temple, he takes away those sins, but then he also takes our iniquities. So it's like, he's all of that. And even though the father used each separate one of the atonement for the bull, with the bull and then with the goat for the whole congregation and then the scapegoat, it's like, that's the fullness of who he is when he sent Christ. He took all of those sins. All of it. He stayed there till the end. And, you know, I, I, I wrote on my, I wrote in my notes, I put Yeshua and Bar uh, Barabbas, remember when they're, which, who, who shall we take? I mean, it was like the whole process happened right in front of us. We had the two, the two goats were sitting there and they said, which one do you want to set free? And the, the lot was cast, not really, but it was cast to the people. They got to choose and they did it. They chose not to set Yeshua free. So that it was interesting that he actually plays both parts, right? He plays, and but there he's actually chosen as the scapegoat, as the Azazel. He's chosen at that moment that yes, he's now going to be the one that is not set free. He's not going to get to go, not freeing lollygag and free. He's going to be the one that takes on the sin of everything. He's going to be the one that takes on um, Barabbas. I don't even know if that makes any sense. That don't follow that trail, everyone. Keep going. Hey Charlie. Just, yeah. Um, just as you were thinking about it, or as you guys were talking about it, something that came to me, it's like a whole like different trail here. Yeah. So as we're looking at the messianic age. Yes. Um, and so, you know, here we got Trump's trumpets and atonement. The books are open. We've got judgment and that being the final thing that happens, it kind of makes me think of like, you know, the, the goats and the sheep kind of like, um, and that final casting off of the impurity, Ooh, um, good. getting the, you know, you've got to get the impurity out of the camp. Um, so it's kind of the, those final ones who say, um, we're not doing this, we're, we, you know, we're not bowing the knee, you know, or, um, you know, the demonic, whether because, you know, Azazel is, I think, you know, if you look at, I think it's what the book of Enoch, it's mm -hmm. kind of, whether it's the fallen angel, you know, um, it's, there's those kind of traditions attached to that name. So I like, yeah, that's the immediate, what I saw when you talk about final. So what's the final thing before, um, you know, we get into that, um, that, that eighth, eighth day, right? The, you know, we got to get out the, the final because we know during the millennial reign, we've got people who are still saying no, because they're not coming up for tabernacles and they're not, you know, so they're given all of the chances and saying, you know, um, you know, here's the time. Uh, and then they still say no. So I don't know. That's where I went with it. it. Just as you, that popped up in my brain right now. Oh, that's good. And if, if you guys, if I don't see your hand up, cause I'm on a tiny little screen. So just like unmute and say, Hey, I have something to say. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that is good. I, I'm, I'm, I was making quick notes cause I want to spend some time in that too. It's interesting too, that we have we have Aaron now too. So they, the, the, the goats chosen and then Aaron's told that now he's going to go change his garments to enter into the Holy of Holies. He's going to change his garments. He has to remove all of his high priest garb and he has to have a mikvah and then he can go into the, I mean, he, he goes in with his white garments. He goes in there and he is um, fully humble. That's what I just kept seeing was that he has to humble himself to come before him. He can't even go in with all the, can you imagine how, I mean, okay. So I always tease my husband that he used to have, when we met, he had this stupid big truck with, I miss him, Barrett. It was flames. It was lifted. It was like crazy truck. And it was like, woo, here comes Randy. And I remember thinking, oh, this is so like he, when he got in the truck, he took on a different persona. Like all he drove, like very great. Like he was just different. And I mean, I feel like, and I remember that when we would ride on his motorcycle and I would put on my little motorcycle, babe outfits, I walk different, like with my motorcycle boots on and I just walk different. I present, does anyone have something? Maybe when you put it on, you just act a little different. Um, I see my daughter when she's cooking and she puts on a little cooking apron and she goes and I watch her her posture changes and it's her, it's her happy place. And she's her, everything changes. So I'm thinking of when he, I can imagine how hard it would be not to walk in a little bit of like to, to keep that pride under control when you're wearing this garb all over you with these beautiful stones on you. And you're, you're like, everyone's like, Whoa, he's the high priest. Like you're it. Now he has to humble himself because he has to bow. Nothing is, nothing is higher. Nothing is higher. And he has to bow down. He has to strip everything down. We're told in Galatians 3.27 that all who are baptized in Messiah have clothed themselves in Messiah. 
And Revelation 7, 14 said, we are washed in white robes by the blood of the lamb. Hebrews 10, 19, we can confidently enter by the blood of Yeshua. Those, all those are hyperlinks back to this section right now. Those were all hyperlinked that we can confidently go in, that we're washed by him, that we have these robes. So we had the altar happening, the brazen altars happening out here. And then we have the golden altar. And before I, I had a, a download I want to share, but the, I want you to think of these two altars for a second that things are happening on. You have the brazen altar where people are bringing stuff in daily, right? Where stuff was happening. Even the, the goat that was not chosen as a scapegoat was actually, was actually, uh, was actually uh, sent up as an offering on that. So we have the, and the brazen altar is an alloy. It's a bunch of mixed metals. It's hard. It's, um, and I'm thinking of things like our flesh. It really represents our flesh. It's where the flesh and the hide were burnt out there. All the meat is burnt out there. It's a place where I think that even Halisa teaches that it's the nephesh. That's where the flesh is, is processed. But when you get into the inside, into the golden altar, you get in the inside, that's where the, where the, only the blood is brought in. The blood is sprinkled on there. None of the, none of the flesh is brought into that. It's the things that are happening secretly on the inside. It's where the incense is happening. It's a sweet smelling place. And I just want you to have that feeling of what's happening out here. You've got the flesh burning away. All of our, all the things that are obvious is getting burned away. And then we have a process for all the secret things to be handled as well. So this is a time when it's not just, it's the intentional and unintentional sins. It's the things that were outward that are easy for us to see, but it's also those little things that maybe no one knows about. Maybe it's the thing that um, it could be a wound. It could be, it doesn't necessarily mean like the sin, like I love sombra. It's not meaning sin doesn't mean like you're like, oh, leprosy, you know, sin. It's your sin is something that's just, you're missing the mark. And I'm going to tell you, I have things in my life that you guys would be like, what is the big deal? That's not a big deal. But I know for me, I'm missing the mark. I, I, I'm trying to think, Lisa, you know what I thought of you, uh, Brenda, uh, Shelby and I were talking about you the other day and we were talking about, we loved your heart because we started out talking about our workout program, what we've been doing, working out. And she was saying, she remembered you talking about loving, doing that, doing bar um, that you loved that because you loved how it made your body strong. You were very happy. You're confident in your body for like the first time ever in your life. We're both remembering this and we remember something that you said, you said, I'm just praying that the holy, that it doesn't get to a place where the Holy one has me to give it up because that becomes something that's, um, it's one of those things like we'd all be like, what? That's great. You're taking care of yourself. You're everything. But secretly, sometimes we can, something can then become where we're obsessed with it, or we put too much attention on it and it couldn't be, it's a positive thing, but it's not where God wants us. Does anyone have some things like that in their life? If you feel like sharing it, um, uh, I'm seeing some things about, unfortunately, not all of us are aware of, that we're not missing the mark. They may not want to know what the mark is or should be either by choice or ignorance. This is true, but what we have to trust is it's the Holy one's job. The Holy spirit convicts. And I've been, and I've been boldly praying that pray la prayer lately. Cause I heard someone say, I'm praying that the father convicts them. I'm like, Oh, I forgot I could pray that. So I've been praying father convict me, convict me of the things that I'm unaware of that. I don't even know that, that, that are, that it's keeping me from miss, from hitting the mark. And what's the mark? The mark is getting into his presence, running into his presence boldly and not sheepishly walking around it. Cause I don't know that there's something. And I gave you the guys, the idea showing you about Gracie when she went potty in my house and it was my fault. She did it, but she just normally would come running and jumping in my lap, but because she'd pottied in the house and she knew it, she was hiding from me. So I had to go and make a way for her to be able to come on, come to me boldly, come to me excitingly, come to me with that way she normally, I had to bridge the gap for her because she couldn't do it. That's a silly example maybe for some people, but for me, it makes me understand what's happening even here is he has the things maybe we don't even know we did, but they're deep in here. Or maybe we do know, but we're not sure about, but he's preparing this beautiful process for us to be able to run and jump into his lap, for us to be able to run and get into his presence. Um, we're going to talk, go jump into chapter 18 in a minute. We'll talk about that, but I'm going to keep going about this altar. Um, we have the inward and the outward secrets. We talked about, I told you about the brazen. We have the gold. It's so beautiful. And the smell is different. You have the smell is different inside with the gold. It's the incense. It's a beautiful smell. Think about 
where it's located, you're probably smelling the fresh bread also. You're smelling the oil and things coming from the from the from the from the lamp stand. You're feeling you're he feeling and smelling all these beautiful things. Whereas you're at the brazen altar, it's like carnage. Carnage is happening out there. So have you you guys know sometimes we're like beating through some carnage, but maybe as we mature, we're not dealing with as much carnage anymore. Now we're more, we're operating more maybe on the inside where we're dealing with some things that aren't like I said, not as obvious. Um, some of us choose to stay. Uh, we're, we never leave the ca carnage. We never leave the brazen altar. We stay there and constantly slaying bat dragons, constantly doing the same things over and over and over. It does not mean we can't be in his presence. It just means it's, it's hard for us because we're constantly staying in that immature state of not putting our flesh in, under control. Um, and the other thing I wrote down was each person selected their own offerings. When, when they brought offerings to the, to the tabernacle, when they brought them, um, I wouldn't come bringing my, my thing and say, Oh, uh, I'm going to pick Lori. No, Lori, that's not good. Lori, uh, I'm going to go pick, I'm going to go get your, you need some doves. You know what? And I, I saw something you did last week. So I'm going to go get one of your goats too. Okay. So and honestly, you probably should bring the bull because, you know, I saw through the window. So here's every, that never happened. We're not told that we're supposed to help each other, help a sister out and go pick her, her sacrifices she's supposed to bring to help her get the same thing is true. We're not supposed to point. The other thing is when we had, which we didn't get to talk about last week is when you, you weren't to point out someone else's leprosy. We weren't supposed to say unclean, unclean. That wasn't supposed to be what happened. It said you were supposed to put your hand over your mouth, your up, up, and say as you're walking, unclean, unclean. You were supposed to take responsibility for your things. You were supposed to take responsibility for um, making it known that you, you, someone shouldn't probably be around me. Now you might hear me some days. I'll tell you guys, I am not fit for human consumption today because I don't want to cause you to sin. And I already know I'm not in a good place. And right now he has to work. I'm way at the brazen altar. I can't even get to the golden, golden altar right now, because I'm still dealing with some flesh stuff. It's rising up. I'm slaying a dragon right now, and I'm not fit for human consumption. Sometimes not only do I not do that, it was beautiful love that had the people go outside the camp being sent outside the camp. I'm sorry. I'm going to jump into last week. Anyway, being sent outside the camp was an act of love. It was saying, you know what, you've got some stuff erupting. Now, sometimes the things erupting are not so obvious to other people, except for when our mouths start and we start getting snarky. Maybe you don't have, you don't have Tazria, you don't have leprosy, but maybe your Tazria is, is something on the inside. Your heart is yucky. And all of a sudden your mouth, because what the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your mouth starts, that's me. My, your eyes start rolling. Your head might start bobbing if you're me. <laughs> You start saying things that aren't very life-giving. And what he says is, you know what? Not only do I love you so much, I don't want to embarrass you in front of everybody. I think you need to spend, sister, you need a time out. Come here, come spend some time with me so we can do some stuff together. Because this is too noisy. If you stayed in the community right now, it's going to be too noisy for you. So some of you, he's, and he's pulling, pulls you outside, not as a punishment, but he's saying, I want you to self-identify. Be self-aware, sisters. And get yourself outside the camp and be alone with him and let him do that beautiful work with you. Let him work that out with you so that it gets rid of it. I was walking this morning with him. And I said, Father, there's this one thing that I notice I'm doing it all the time. When am I going to quit doing this? Would you help me? I mean, well, I don't want to be this person. Can you stop? I don't want can show me where to stop. And I know I need to spend some time alone with him so we can work it out. He's saying, unclean honey you're not fit for you're not fit for service in in so you need to be pulled out and i need to spend some time with you outside the camp right now ha has it happened to you and you're noticing no one's calling you back you're mad because you sent an email or you sent a text to someone and there you think they're all ignoring you sometimes it's him loving you so much that he's not going to let you spew that pussy nasty out of your mouth onto other people and he's going to pull you outside the camp because he loves the community. He loves your sisters, your family, everyone so much that he's going to pull you out a little bit. And he's going to keep you out in a little special place where he can bring healing. And instead of looking at that as a punishment, it's not like that kind of time out. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time when you get to be reconciled and redeemed with him. And I hope that you see last week a little more like that, as opposed to exposing all the, your bad things. Instead, he's saying, oh, I just want to make it all right. And I also don't want you to hurt other people. 
And I don't want it to hurt you. I don't want them to know you for that. I want them to know you for you. They don't want them to, I don't want you to expose that ucky part of you. It's just beautiful when that happens. Yeah. So that's good. So you're getting through that part. Each person selects. Now, when he gets done, did I finish this one? Oh, I'm going to jump out. So when, when Aaron is done, when Aaron is off, go ahead. And uh, before you go into something else, I wanted to show you um, my husband's offering this morning that he brought to the altar. <laughs> you know, when we wake up and you have a conversation on the day and then it ends up into something that wasn't supposed to be and you know it's Friday and before you can come to the altar this evening, mm -hmm. you know you're going to have to make that. That's what I loved about coming into Shabbat. You know, we're not supposed to hold our anger and we're not supposed to be right with our, our you know, our members of our family members that are intimate and very close with us every day we shouldn't let the anger go down um but especially when it comes to shabbat you, you got to make it right before you come to that altar and so um my husband and i this morning having a conversation um at the beginning of the day and it just went all the wrong way all the wrong way and it's like ah and it's friday and then so he when he got back from the store here was his little offering he brought right you know for and, those people and, listening can you tell them what it is Lori? for the people who aren't going to see you chocolate chip cookies but it's his way of saying hey can we be at peace we don't we didn't settle anything we didn't have to have a good discussion you know we've been married long enough it's been 15 years you know we know this isn't it's not like things are resolved these are issues you know relationship issues of how we you know connect we know we have issues right but we're okay and we can deal with the next layer of that another time right so we're at yes. peace and then we can we know we both need to resolve things but it's it's okay <laughs> it's okay you can go to the throne it's the fellowship offering right you can both open right. that up and eat those cookies together and it's your fellowship offering to be able to say i had a fellowship offering yesterday mm -hmm. i had a um I had a family member who hadn't spoken to me for two years and it was based on um something torah really they think i'm in a cult we've talked about that before but it was kind of based on something like that and basically they didn't they said well, well we have to be like we have to just be uh paul and barnabas we're just got to just split ways and we're not going to be able to be together and a few months ago she called me and apologized it had been two years and we we're very very close it had been two years since she'd spoken to me and she said i just want to apologize to you and she laid it all out what she did wrong how this was wrong how the, she'd gotten the lord had showed her this this and this and how sorry she was and we live far apart from each other and yesterday she had flown in with her husband for a wedding for of his daughter into little rock and uh i was able to drive up to little rock before we left and have breakfast with her and do a fellowship offer and we were able to not just be we've been talking and texting but we were able to hold each other to eat together and re-establish the covenant together. Nothing else needed to be said. My husband said, was it awkward? I said, no, we like ran to each other. We were so happy to be together again. And, and that's how we should be when someone is out of the tent. When you've noticed your a friend is out, if you know your sister, maybe she's needing to spend some time outside the camp, you might need to bring a lasagna to her house so that you help her instead of pointing out how she's acting crazy, you might just need to help her so she can spend time and get well. So she can get healthy. Maybe he's trying to do some surgery on her and it's it's a very private, quiet surgery. Or it could be giving birth to something and she's loud and screaming because just because we we're not dirty because we're on our menstrual cycles, it's the time when he's restoring us, when things are dying and things are being brought back to life, when our bodies are cleansing, and he loves us so much that he's giving us that beautiful time to be able to take care of ourselves. That's the same exact thing that's happening here. I think one thing just put a little note this is one another little thing that popped up on my notes i said i never noticed before that they took the bull the kohanim the bull that was for them and the goat's blood and it was mingled and then it was brought in and i was like oh father father thank you that 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 the your blood is mingled with the blood of your blood is covering my sin you're my high priest and I don't know if that's the reason that's all of it for me, though. That's what I, I, I wrote out was, and then that's brought into the secret places and that's 
sprinkled over all the secret places, all the secret wounds, all the things that need healing, all the things that that blood that was mingled, both, the, both, both blood is brought together and brought into that secret place. And then when it's all finished and it's all done, it says, never have I read this before. And I, I think I have to, it was, uh, it's in, I highlighted it. Oh, it's in uh, Leviticus 16, verse 23. He says, then Aaron is to come into the tent of meeting, take off the linen garments that he put on when he went into the holy place and leave them there. And I was, I, I read quickly something that said they were left forever. They were stored forever. They were never put back on. They didn't get used again for the next Yom Kippur. He goes in, he does all these, humbly does these things and serves in these, these white garments, serves before the Holy One. He goes in to redeem us from our, our sins. He goes in to, to, to petition, to pull, put everything in the holy secret place, holy of holies, in God's presence. One time a year, he has white garments on. And then before he comes out, he takes them off and leaves them there. I instantly saw this picture of Yeshua leaving the garments in the tomb. that he was wrapped in these linen garments and that they were left in the tomb. Did someone commentary on that? Uh, maybe they have, I didn't read it. I'm just saying that was the picture that I saw. My little view master clicky thing that clicked across my page. It was a hyperlink for me that Yeshua left. He went into Sheol. He went and he, he went in that he went, he's ministering. He was redeeming my sins. He was redeeming your sins. And when he got finished, he left, he left those clothes and he was able to put the hype. He put his high priest garb back on and came back in to serve us as our high priest. Yes, Sarita. So I was just thinking when um, Zacharias, um, John the Baptist's father, he was the priest that year that went in, that was on Yom Kippur, when he, that was the one a year when the priests go in. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that like literally just clicked like, oh, okay, so that was at that time of the year in the fall during that feast that the angel visited him in there and told him that his wife was going to give birth to a son and everything. So yeah, that kind of gives a timeline of like when John was born and all that. And so, I mean, you don't know exactly when, but as far as how long after that, did she conceive, but the fact that that was at that feast in that time when that angel came in there and told him and then struck him deaf because, or blind, mute because he didn't believe that's good that's good yeah. sandy writes over here from p sharir study voice of god i probably said that all wrong if you are in the process of waiting on god for clear direction there is something about himself that he is revealing to you in the meantime don't ignore it and ask him to reveal it thank you that's really really good that's really good Yes, that would, okay, Sandy says that's good, spending time with the Lord when he is, when he, when he, we don't understand something, that he is sovereign, yes, okay, um, we jump on to 18, and a lot of time, I have skipped through 18, because I was like, well, this doesn't pertain to me, <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to learn, like, uh, hello, every sentence, every letter pertains to you, so quit, quit, quit it. I guess I have learned it, but I have to tell you in the past, if there's anyone else who felt that way, you were not alone in the past. I have felt as well that I was like, oh, well, this is fine. It's not like I have an issue with incest in my family. If you have young children present, I will promise to be a good girl. Um, but this is, um, this is a, um, this is a whole thing about that. And he says, and then Adonai spoke to Moses, speak to B'nai Israel and say to them, I am Adonai, your God. And then he starts going on and he's telling him, he keeps saying, I am Adonai. He says, you are not to act as they do in the land of Egypt. You're not to do it. You're not to act how they act in Egypt. I'm going to tell you, sisters, we are not to act as they do here in the land of Egypt. We're not to act like it. It says, and where you used to live, where you used to be, you're not to act like that anymore. He has called you out. He has redeemed you. He has put beautiful clothes on you. He has paid an ultimate price for you. You're not to live like that anymore. He says, nor are you to act as they do in the land of Canaan. So if it's not wherever you're delivered from or wherever you're going, you're not allowed to act like that. So 
just you're supposed you can be in the in the world but not of the world right we're not supposed to act by like how where we were delivered out of we can say oh well i don't do that anymore i'm not the party girl and i don't go running around but you may have taken on some things on where you're going and it could be religious it could be religious that you're not supposed to take on there's religious practices in canaan he's saying i don't want you to participate there could be some things that aren't bad I'm just doing my air quotes for if you're listening. They're not necessarily bad, but they're not God. They're not what he's told you to do. You might be headed to a direction and I want you to have full discernment as you're walking into Canaan, your promised land, that there's things and there's people that are going to be happening in your promised land that may not make sense to you. Take that as a warning. He's telling you, I don't want you to act like them. I don't want you to act how they act when you go into the land of Canaan where I'm bringing you, nor are you to walk in their customs it's really difficult we struggle we struggle releasing customs it is really difficult some of us have we know we've been delivered from egypt but we and we're going into this new thing and we're pulling on customs and the customs might not be like i'm not going to list them all because i don't want to uh, i will you know i probably will offend everyone but it could be some religious customs it could be some customs that you've grown up with your whole life it, you know it's not that obvious sometimes the customs could be as i don't want you to take these jewish customs on either I don't want you to take these on because this I didn't tell them to do that either. They pulled that in. So please spend some time in his presence. He's telling you that you're to obey my ordinances, keep my statutes and walk in them. I'm Adonai, your God. So you're to keep my statutes and my ordinances. Oh, uh, he said it twice. He's saying, pay attention, exclamation point. The one who does them will live by them. I am Adonai. What are you supposed to be focusing on? You're supposed to be focusing on his ordinances and his, his practices, his calendar. He's giving you, he just went through his calendar. He just told you Yom Kippur. He's talking about, this is the head of that year. He's talking about how, okay, we're going to, this is how I want you to start out. This is the practice. And I'm gonna, giving you a way so you can start fresh every year, release it all. And let's get going because I don't want you to act like you used to or how you are going to but I'm giving you an opportunity then so that you can do that. And then we go right into incest. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Like it came, we went straight into incest, but what is it? Like I said, you may say, oh, this isn't me. If you guys write down first Peter two eleven, lust wages war against our soul sister. How many of you guys just like, can't even believe commercials on television. Like how many are you like, I can't even watch television without being violated. Look, I'm, I, I mean, I see, I'm not even going to mention them because that's not even appropriate. I've seen commercials. I'm thinking the innuendo that like children won't know, but we know what they were really talking about is, it's scary to me, the stuff that's on there. Um, when you're looking through this incest, it isn't just the obvious things that we can say, okay, well, we all should know. You don't sleep with your daughter. You don't sleep with it. You don't do these things. We say, well, duh, that's like, in our culture, it's taboo. You don't, we get that. It's very clear. But what we don't maybe get is some of the things aren't as clear. Some of the things like books we read that cause us to have secret fantasies that are happening. Um, and we, and, and I know that there it used to be like the, everyone was reading the romance novels, you know, and then it'd be like, these passionate scenes that were happening and you're like whoa whoo, whoo. and now now you're now you're now you're coveting wish or, or you're you're wishing you had a different husband or or you wish you had a husband like that or you and you're not satisfied anymore with what you have it could sometimes i mean anyways i, I won't i found myself i couldn't even go i have to go there i couldn't even go into model homes i think i told you guys this before i couldn't go into model homes anymore because it was causing me to like covet after something that i didn't have and it was when i say he might be telling you to repent and get rid of some things that was it for me it was it, they revealed to me that i had a dissatisfaction with his provision for me i was dissatisfied with what he'd given me and when i would go to that it would cause me to sin so i had to stop going i had to stop watching hgtv for a while for the same reason until i finally got out of the i could come back in the camp like he had me out of the camp and turned off hgtv and said sister you're, you're, it's causing you to sin. It's causing you to covet. It's causing you to not be happy with my provision and to, to lust after things, not people, but things that aren't something I'm going to give to you. It's causing that endorphins like, Oh, I want this. I want, I want, I want, it caused some things to happen to me that I had to release. Um, 
and, and it wasn't something someone else would be like, well, that's not even bad. Well, no, it's not bad. It's permissible to some, but for that season, it wasn't permissible to me. Now, now I could walk into any model home, any mansion, any, anything. And that thought won't even, I think, oh, I'm so blessed for you. This is amazing. Glad I don't have to clean it. Like, that's how I feel now. I'm like, so hurt. <laughs> same thing if you have amazing car I'm glad I don't have to pay for the insurance but I'm so proud for you this is exciting what a great provision yay um all right gave you that one move on there's some hyperlinks through this quite a few hyperlinks um again not just blatant, blatant incest the reason that they brought this the whole thing about the incest the reason that is because you guys know like ancient Near East perspective was that if like a a um it's obvious the taboo part you think well duh you can't but if a sister-in-law moved in or if someone you, a man if he was as a husband is is required to provide food clothing and shelter and conjugal visits so that you that you could have babies that was like he was required to do that as your husband and if he violated those it was it, that could even be reason for divorce if he wasn't giving you conjugal visits and he was spending time with other people you could have get a writ of divorce because you weren't able to have children. And that was so important. And that was such, it was huge. However, sometimes it got confusing for some men because they thought, well, I'm providing food, clothing, and shelter for this person, not my wife, but it's my nephew, my niece, because her dad died and now we're taking care of her. So I'm providing, so I must be able to have all these other, I get conjugal visits too. It's like they were, he, they would get confused. And they'd have to, so God is so good to women. He's so good to us. He's protecting our innocence. He's protecting, but we're not out of the loop. He, he, he does do, he, he, he does hit us too in this. If we, if we look, um, verse six in 18, six, does he say, okay. None of you is to come near anyone who is close, is a close relative to uncover their nakedness. I am Adonai. Now, I saw a little hyperlink to the Garden of Eden and also then to Noah, right? So the Garden of Eden is that they were naked and ashamed. I saw Noah, he was naked and his sons walked backwards and covered him up. The one who didn't, he was restricted. He was cursed. He was limited the rest of his life. He wasn't as blessed as the others were because of him not covering sin. We see the hyperlink. Love covers a multitude of sins. We are not to approach our family members or our sisters in our congregation or brothers in our congregation and expose their nakedness. We're not supposed to uncover their nakedness. We're not supposed to scream unclean. We're not supposed to do that. It's not our job to bring shame to them and to do that. We can pray that they'd be convicted because we see something that's bringing harm to them. And when we are like, well, God knows my heart. He sure does, sister. He sure does. So if you're coming from a judgy place instead of a you're scared, you just don't want them to bring that hurt and pain in their life. You know, I've had several things that have happened in my life that I've, I'm, I'm a walking never. I'm a walking never. I'll never do that. And there's, and some of them are really bad and, and this isn't the place to share it, but some things I've done, I'm thinking I would never do that. And I found myself, we see Paul, why do I do the things I don't want to do? No, this, these are the things when you're like, I would never do that. The problem is my heart wasn't, oh, I never want to do those things. I, oh, I'm so sad. I saw she did that. And I hope I, I never want to do that because I see the pain that brings. Instead, for me, it was the pride. Was, I will never do. I wouldn't do something like that. I can't believe she did that. And sure enough, it's like he let it happen so that I would do the same thing. So now when I see a woman doing one of those things, my heart breaks. My heart breaks because I know the pain that that brings. I know the pain that making that choice brings. So now I want to be the priest at the altar, helping them process so that they can get back into his presence because I know how long it takes to hey. get back to the throne. <laughs> when, when you've done something that's brought that much pain. 
And when love covers a multitude of sin, that's what that means. It's like, now I'm not going, I would never do that. Now it's like, oh God, please help. Oh, please help them. Be please help them process quickly. Please let, don't let shame take root. Please, now I know. And Romans 8, 28 jumped in and is working all that for my good, but hopefully for the good of thousands of women who, whether they're hearing this now to know that that's what we're here to do is now jump in as priests, as the priesthood and help process those things at the altar quietly change our clothes quietly so no one knows that we were in the middle of the mess with them and then not tell everyone about it as a prayer request sarita did you have something oh okay i'll meet you back so um yeah so he's telling us here that we're not supposed to uncover the nakedness um i wrote down some hebrew it starts out in verse six it's the Hebrew in there says ish, 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 ish. So it's talking about a man, ish, ish. It's a man, right? And then the next part of it goes into plural. And I won't say it correctly, but it's tik revere. Tik revere, I believe is how you say it. And that's actually plural. And what that means is it's putting women as part of it. So we think we're just talking about men in this situation. But then he, he, he uses this word in Hebrew to make it plural. Um, and and it starts out by saying low T review. It's T I K R E V U. Someone else can say that. Um, see, anybody can be here and teach this. So, so that was the word and what it meant. And I looked it up and I looked it up in some commentaries. I'm just going to read. So I don't, don't think I, I know this by heart. Um, but we're not to, what it meant is we're not to approach to uncover nakedness. Yeshua is the reminder of not just the physical act, it's not just the physical act that we are not supposed to approach uh, sexuality. We're not supposed to approach others and uncover the, we're not supposed to approach it. And it might not be just physical. We could be thinking it, you know, Yeshua said, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not just that if you do the act of adultery, but if you just look at a woman with an eye of adultery, that's a hyperlink to this right here. It's exact a hyperlink. He's saying, he was telling us that he wasn't like, oh, I'm coming up with this brand new covenant that that says, well, not only now I'm going to make it harder. Now, not only can you not uh, commit adultery, but you can't even look at a, a woman and think of her that way. No, that wasn't a brand new concept. It was right here. He was telling them in this in Hebrew, he's saying it was it was big. You're not supposed to approach to uncover nakedness. So we're not, they're not, that means that is pornography. That's looking at something because you're approaching something and you're uncovering the nakedness. You're, it's causing you then to, it's King, we saw David do it with Bathsheba. It's that prolonged look. It could be that it's that simple. It's the prolonged look, or it's the little look that you might give somebody. And you're like, Hmm, you know, there's this little, little look that took a little bit longer than it should. And maybe you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Charlie, but someone in here knows, someone knows that there might be someone at your fellowship, there might be someone in your family. It, it's someone that you might look at just a little bit too long, longer than you should, that the two of you had a little cute little joke between the two of you. He's saying this is, this is, this is going to destroy community. These are things put into place because he's trying to build a strong, holy community so that we can walk this out well together ladies those of you who have mixed families where you maybe you have ch uh, your children even not mixed feel let's be honest it could just be regular brothers and sisters we have to be mindful we have to watch we have to watch for that interesting little you know that little thing that we notice wait a minute there's something going on here that shouldn't be going on here that's what he's saying we need to be mindful of that and ladies we get we get the privilege of walking this out for our children this is a lot of a place too where we find a lot of uh, talking about the verses later. It says you're not to take your son's daughter, your daughter's daughter, to uncover her nakedness. That's what I was talking about for uh, their direct relative. A lot of people use there's some parts in here talking about modesty, and I think that even in, in Halisa, for her in her study, if you go back, I'll look this week. But if you go back in her study, she talks about oh, quite a bit about modesty. But this is a part two for modesty for girls. I was taught that. I was supposed to protect my brother's eyes, meaning all the men out there, protect his eyes. And it was their job to protect my heart. 
to make sure that they didn't do things that violated my heart. So I didn't have boys. And if I did, that's what I wa so wanted to, to extend that to them is to let them know that it's their job to protect girls' heart, their sister's heart. It's the sisters in their fellowship's heart, in their community's heart. Ladies, it's our job, even as grown women, it's our job to protect our brother's eyes because they might look one too many times. I, have a, I wear tank tops. I mean, I wear, I have a bra, sorry. I wear a tank top under everything. And the reason is because if I bend over or do something, I want to make sure that I'm protecting my brother's eyes. I'm making sure that if I'm in the, I promise you, I'm going to come to your home and I will not come with a shirt that is in any way going to be exposing something that is not going to be honoring to you as my friend, as my sister, that your husband is going to notice that I have a certain kind of shirt on sisters. We have to protect that. I see women showing up to things and I just have to ask you, please protect your friend's husband's eyes because we don't want them looking a couple and yeah, it is our responsibility and nobody's, nobody's saying it anymore. Everyone now we're going on to, to the opposite. We're saying, well, they shouldn't be looking. Well, this is what I got. They shouldn't be looking. I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt and it's a little bit, it's a little bit low. So I have a tank top on because no one needs to see, no one needs to see all that. I took a picture with something the other day with my girl, with my friend, with our thing. And I noticed, Ooh, there's a lot. You can see a line. You can see cleavage. No one needs to see that. So it's cropped out. I'm not going to post that picture so that I have my friend's husbands see that or their sons or someone sees that because there is nothing good that's going to come from that. And I feel like we need to be teaching each other that we need to be teaching our girls that I'm not telling them not to be ashamed of their bodies. It has nothing to do with that. It's about protecting their brother's eyes. It's about protecting that. It's, it, and, and in some cases, it might be their sister's eyes. If they struggle with that, if they struggle with homosexuality, which is part of this portion, if they struggle with some, if they struggle with that, then we need to protect their eyes. We need to love and protect each other so much that we're like, I don't want to do anything that brings you harm. I don't want to cause you to sin. So I'm going to cover up if that's what that, that's the case. I'm not going to run now. I, uh, Deborah, I wish Deborah Flanagan was on here. We were cracking up because there's seasons in our life where we're prancing around in little bikinis because we thought we were just, you know, fully Christian and running around in our little bikinis and we're all in front of each other, jumping in the hot tubs with our friends, husbands and like, oh, let's all jump in the hot tub with our bikinis on. And I know there is grace. Thank you, Father, for grace. And we were thinking, how did we get through that? I don't even know why he didn't just take us home. We didn't think there was anything wrong with it because like no one's talking about it. And that's the reason why we get to talk about that this week. We just get to talk about it. Like, hey, set some limits on your television. Protect your husband's and your son's eyes so they don't walk into a room. I had company come one time and we had a, a, a parental code on our television. We were, Shelby was just bringing this up yesterday. And we we're talking about someone coming to visit and staying with us and they were wanting to watch something and they're saying, oh, can I have the code? And my husband's like, well, why do you need the code? He goes, oh, because we want to watch this show. And it says we need a code. He's like, well, if you need a code, you can't watch it here. Because I don't want my daughter to walk through the room. We don't want to watch that. But if you're going to watch it in the privacy, first of all, it's our home. Like you think you'd honor that. But if you want to walk, if our daughter walks through or something, we don't want any of us to accidentally see that. So put some codes, you, you might have to put, put some parental codes on your, cause it's just because, you know, when they added the TVMA, they put that up there now, now that just gives them permission to show whatever they want, because I cannot believe how many things that are on television now, just because they warned you, they told you it was TVMA. Now it's fully pornography. I mean, full blown pornography. Like I am shocked. Like there's images I can never get out of my brain because of going through, looking at something going, Oh no. And I, am I a prude? Gosh, I'm sorry, but I think I'm turning into one. You guys, I'm sorry, but it's happening because it says I'm not supposed to. What? I read you the verse. Psalms 101, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I set a lot of worthless things before my eyes. I realize I'm, have, I prayed for conviction and it's happening. Maybe that's why. Sorry, guys. Uh, Sandy says there used to be dress codes at school. And we need to pray for school representatives to repair that. Hey, it might be repaired because they all have to stay home and they have to, you know, they're all wearing sweatpants. So there you go. They're staying in their homes. I think, I think, let's see, what I, anything, anything else exciting? Spiritual incest. I did write a note. Um, 
not being alone with the opposite sex. You know, sometimes we can say, well, we didn't touch each other. We didn't do anything, but you have it, there, people have emotional affairs or there could be emotional incest going on between maybe a brother-in-law and a sister, um, family members, but they, they're not physically touching, but there's an emotional, there's emotional things happening. We have a rule in our home that neither of us are allowed to be alone with someone of the opposite sex, that we can't be alone with them. I actually, we had to have a long talk because I had to have a patient and it was a very special situation that I had to give him an infusion and he and I would be alone and there'd be no other person in the room. That was really hard. My, my, it was a HIPAA violation that my husband couldn't be there. We couldn't have anyone else present. We probably should have said no, we didn't. We said yes. And uh, it worked, turned out fine, but it could have not. I mean, it could, there was, there was, that wasn't a, someone could have seen me coming out of this person's house and I'm all by myself. You know, Billy Graham never would even be in an elevator alone with a woman. He always had someone with him. I want to encourage you guys. If you have babysitters coming, you take them home. You don't, that's the rule. We just aren't alone. He's not alone with, with anybody, especially if you have family members, nieces, don't set your husbands up for failure by having them run your niece home really quick. You do it or go with him. There's, there's just things that can't, that happen all the time and we need to protect each other. This is a horrible, horrible world and we have to do it. And we have to protect ourselves from spiritual and from emotional intimacy um, and, and not forming unhealthy attachments. And it's happened. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. I'm be fully honest. It, it's happened. I have formed unhealthy attachments. I have had emotional affairs with people that I had to repent from. Um, when you, I have had connections with people that I thought, I thought, oh, I wish my husband was like that and had to repent from, had to confess and repent from, was there physical attack? No, there was no physical, but it's, but, but Yeshua tells us it's not just doing it. It's looking at it. It's where our brain goes. And that is a hyperlink to this section. So I pray as you read through this, that you will have him minister to your, on a lighter note, <laughs> minister to your heart, minister to your soul. I want you to rejoice in the fact that he put this whole thing together. All of it is for your redemption. All of it is to save you and protect you. This is him sitting down with you saying, honey, I just don't want you to run in the road because you're going to get hit by a car. I don't want people to talk bad about you. So stay away from these situations because I don't want you to walk in shame. I love on Shabbat when we pray, when we pray that may the Lord protect you from shame. But I start crying every time because I know, I know that how our actions can bring shame on us. And it, it's, it's not so much that the shame that will keep you in bondage in the world, but the shame that can attach. And, and if you don't walk through that approach with him to deliver you from that shame, the shame keeps you from running into your daddy's lap. It keeps you from running boldly into the throne room and being able to get those beautiful downloads, letting him restore your heart. That's why I'm praying protection over you, over the protection of my children, my granddaughters that that shame would not be able to come near them, that they would be protected from that. So I pray that for you today. I pray that, uh, that you are, you see Yom Kippur in a new way today, that you see it as a way that you are able to approach him in such a special way. It's a personal private date with him, very intimate, intimate connection with him. He wants that date with you. So please put it on your calendars. Mark the day off. It's September 15th at night at sundown till the 16th at sundown. It's a fast. It's a time you deny your flesh. It's a time you deny, go through and read all the things about what you deny yourself from. I'm pretty sure there's, I mean, there's no sexual contact. There's males. It's everybody to be alone. Everybody just spend time with your father, with your maker, with your husband, your bridegroom and make it a beautiful neat. And maybe it is that you want, you feel like wearing white stuff, take a, a shower, take a beautiful bath, spend time with him try it, try it this year. And I want to hear all about it. I want to hear all about it. Anything else? Great encouragements, Charlie. Yes, this is the enemy always looking to divide and kill and destroy. Amen. Let's not give him a place. Let's not give him a place. Sometimes just our flesh divides, kills and destroys too. It's we're pretty powerful. Chrissy says I'm a single mom. And all my friends think that I'm crazy because I do that. I actually have waited for the elevator to come back so that I'm not in, in alone with it with a man Good for you, Christy. Great, great, great. Great, Ruth. That's a great thing to pray for, conviction. Wonderful. 
I'm I'm going to read a few of these and then I'll let y'all go. Um, back up. Uh, Sarita says she struggled for a long time with lust too. It makes me so mad now to see women dressed immodestly in church. It's really hard. I have, I have been in churches before where we're up on the platform as the pastors doing things and having women sitting in viewing distance and seeing all the way up their skirts because they're so short. And then the pastors are just, try, how are they supposed to try to be delivering or bringing a message? And, and it's like, you know, no protections. Like I want to bring over and bring one of those prayer cloths and like lay it over their laps. Like, hi, honey sorry, we just need to do this without bringing shame. Now don't bring shame. It's not our job to point that out to people, but you can pray for conviction for them. Unless they're, you're really close and you have a loving heart. If there's a difference, like I told you, it's different when you're going, girl, you need to not do this because you're a, you're a hoe bag. You need to quit doing, you know, don't go crazy on them. Don't come from that place. I would never do that. I can't believe she's sitting there with that short skirt on. Instead, <clears throat> there's, it's revealing a pain. It's revealing something. So, so praying for them to be convicted from a heart of not, you need to convict her because she's showing my husband everything. You come from a heart like father, that must, there's pain there. I don't want her to have shame. I don't want her to, to have the consequences that, and have to be. So father, would you protect her? And would you bring, bring conviction to her and lovingly show her, take her outside the tent, take her outside the community so that you can bring healing and restoration to her so that she would be whole. And then what happens? You just love all over here and you watch things change. You watch that you uh, pos have a, be a positive role model, the love of, remember the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's how things are changed. That's how lives are changed. That's how redemption happens. It's for the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I love you guys all so much. I'm praying that the father just pour his spirit upon you. I pray that this Shabbat, that you feel a special, special, special anointing from him. You feel his presence like you have not felt in a long time that you quiet in your heart, you quiet your soul, you quiet in your spirit, you cause your flesh to be quiet so that you can hear him, so that you can leave that brazen altar and you could actually go into the Holy of Holies tonight, spend some time with him. Father, thank you, Father, that as you surround them, thank you as you just show them how much you love them. I thank you for a supernatural provision today. I thank you for the women that are provision is causing them from being able to leave the brazen altar because they're so focused on provision they can't get into the inner courts with you because of that provision has become uh, so stressful so father we just we lay that corbinat before you that father you're our provider lord I, we lay that down now for every woman that listens to this that's struggling right now i say that we lay that down if there's lust if they're struggling with lust or anything that's keeping them that they're just wanting 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 and they can't they can't get it. There's that. We lay it down now at this altar. We burn it all up, Father. Thank you, Father. If there's shame that you've already paid the price for shame and that you're telling us right now that we just have to come before you and thank you for that. Thank you for being the sacrifice. Thank you, Father, that all we have to do is just give it to you and that we can walk boldly because you've already paid the price for the shame and you won't, you're not ashamed of us. Thank you, Father. You're not ashamed. You're not angry with us and that you just want to redeem us and have us come run, jump in your lap. Father, thank you that you're just letting your love fill every crack right now, cover every sin. I thank you as you're restoring women who've maybe had that attitude where they felt they had to point things out or they felt upset about things that they are feeling your love so strong right now that they're able to give grace where they never could give it before. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Again, I just, I can't get past Father that, that there's a supernatural provision of grace that you want to give supernatural provision of funds, of finances that you want to give and that you just want that us to lay that down and not let that be what keeps you from that worry to keep us out of your presence. So I thank you for the peace that you're providing in that area and in, in, in hearts right now that you're supernaturally, you're just touching it and, and letting them be able to then lay it down and be able to come into your presence today. Thank you, Father. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Love, love, love you. And we will see you next week. Everyone pray Brenda's with us. We just know it's such a hard time. I know it's kind of, I, we just know it's a hard time as they process the, her mother passing. Um, but um, we are all praying for you, Brenda, as you listen to this and we love you so much and we can't wait to, can't wait for you to get back. Love you.